And I understand, sir. But what I was asking is, and, and I know I know you are very intelligent, and you understand what I was asking, but there's a different agenda. And you just went through that, and I understand. But what I was trying to say is what John D. Johnson and all of us used to deal with getting the university to assist us in different endeavors. And for an example, what he said, like, the, uh, my PhD is in curriculum and instruction. And when he said that, I just thought, ha, we could get those different departments to train different people. But that was a different model than what we were trying to get at. What we're trying to get at here is educate ourselves in this different area so we can deal with those policy committees downtown and the city because they are looking at a big thing here, which we're kind of pawns in that. And we got to educate ourselves because we, we got to be ready when they get ready to do the big thing. So that's a different thing. And you're looking at me crazy, but I know you know no, what I'm talking no, about, no, what I'm you're talking about. So I'm through. Okay, go ahead, everybody. So I, I don't think I understood this as, like I do now the last few weeks, but just kind of based on the conversation. It seems to me if we took the 10 points on what is a community benefit, you know, those 10, those 10 points, computers, connectivity, classes, and so on. Seems to me what's necessary is to say, okay, just like the discussion just then about classes, right? Mm -hmm. So if we take the category classes, I think we tried it when we did those short reports last week when Carol and Brian and other people reported cyberspace. So if we took each one of those 10 points and had, like you just said, a self-committee discussion around that point, so that we're able to talk concretely about kind of what is the current status of that problem, right? And what ideas do, do we need to talk about implementing, say, in year one, so that we get at the, the impact that we want. So year one might be figuring out this question of certification or making sure that the curriculum is standardized, making sure that there is a training. And if we do that with each one of these points, then we end up with, for each one of these 10 areas, more details and drawing on the um, anchor institutions volume, kind of what is the problem as you see it? What do we want to do year one? What do we want to do year two? What do we want to do year three? And that gives us more detail, more operational detail, if you, if you will. So it's kind of taking advantage of what we did last meeting with the short minute report, but really boring in on these 10 points and getting kind of maximum discussion in a brief one-page summary mm -hmm. of each one of those things. And that gives us our kind of marching orders um, as you know the policy committee goes into its discussions. That gives us a better sense of what the community is saying it wants to do with regards to addressing the digital divide through through these these ten points that are listed. Okay, I uh, uh, this document is an attempt to get us started to come up with a plan that could be put forward to the policy committee and. Uh, after these 10 points, you see there's organizational structure and timetable. Um, I think it might be useful to just go around the room and make sure that before people have to leave, for everybody to say what they hope will come out of these meetings uh, <coughs> so that we can, uh, in the next month, and literally it is the next month, uh, before decisions are made with regard to what the organizational structure is going to be. Um, to be organized is to be more uh, impactful on the situation. Although obviously everybody here is free to come to the <coughs> meetings and say whatever you've got to say. But if we organize, we're likely to make a bigger impact. So here's this is a document, and I, I really need to, to, to hear from everybody because it's only by all of us willing to do whatever's the next step and agreeing on what that next step is that we're going to be able to be effective. Uh, so, but it also takes some work. Uh, and so what we're talking about is people who are going to take some responsibility and do some work between now and two weeks from now. Because if nobody does any work, and we come back and we're having this exact same conversation two weeks later, then the people who want to get something done are going to ignore this conversation and go on and do what needs to be done so that when the time comes for the real decision making, we've got something on the table and not just a lot of conversation that doesn't impact policy. So we've got a month left.
And so I'd like to hear conversation about this proposal or any other proposal or any other method that anybody thinks might be useful to accomplish what we need to accomplish. Um, <clears throat> when I think about sort of the big picture, we know, I think we know some of the minutia we're trying to get to. What I want to be clear about is are you or someone else um, approaching this work from particular organizing principles? Say, for instance, uh, there are three organizing principles when you think about community organizing. One being to win <coughs> victories for large groups of people. Two being giving people a sense of their own power. And three being alter the relations of power. So in that context, I think you know, the group has been getting down on the first one, winning victories for large groups of people. I mean, you've laid that out very clearly. Um, second, I feel like we're kind of at the um, giving people a sense of their own power, and that's kind of what we're talking about right now, if we think about it in this arena. And with that, to me, as a community organizer, my ultimate goal is always to alter the relations of power. So we aren't constantly thinking about ourselves as the one who, you know, who got the crumbs off the table, because some folks ain't even getting those. So we can, as poor people and as black and brown people, often think we got down if we got the crumbs. But what would it mean to really alter the relationships of power? So in that, so I'm asking that question, are those organizing principles useful to us? And secondly, when I think about getting there, um, something I learned through a good 15 years of educational equity work on a national and local level, sort of working through law things, consent decrees is, we can name so many things that are wrong we can spend the whole day. Um, but when we start looking for solutions, there's this idea of st targeted strategic interventions. So when I think about that, I think about who are we trying to get at in terms of ones we're trying to bring on board. So I think uh, Carol and Joe's approach, for instance, they've got a class just for seniors. So the way they approach the class, the way the room looks, the way they talk to people is specific, is, is something that seniors are going to respond to. And can we think about strategic and targeted interventions about other groups of people? So, you know, is there a particular way that black teenage girls or black teenage boys might respond to as we're trying to bring them on board? Then, then that would be a a strategic targeted intervention, Nathaniel's not going to want to be there. That's not his thing, right? Or, or activist black women or whomever. So when we think about who we're trying to get in classes, for instance, who we're targeting the classes to, one of the things SisterNet does is we sort of picked up, uh, actually, Madam C.J. Walker started this model, but it's made most famous really by Tupperware is throwing Tupperware parties, but we're not selling Tupperware. We're, we're selling health and healing. Or here, we're selling, we're selling, you know, access to and use of technology. Um, and so I'm talking about house parties. I think there's value in people having the discipline to come to a specific location. I think that doesn't have to be the only way we do it. We can also organize house parties where we know, okay, if you say you're going to host it, you're going to get your sisters, you're going to get your friends, you're going to get your neighbors. So we know we're going to have a turnout. So again, strategic targeted interventions and, and three organizing principles was just what I wanted to put on the table. Comments? Good, thank you. This is exactly the kind of thing we need to do because what we're talking about here is the self-organization of the community. Yes. Um, just to enlarge on what Imani was saying, <coughs> community organization
organization has three components. You organize people around <coughs> issues, around money. And we're sort of coming in the back door of this. What is being proposed is, is lacking the, the necessary infrastructure, the leadership that should have been in place in the first place. That is what this community has lacked, has been a responsible leadership to move things forward. And, and so we need to look at and benchmark what have been some successful practices out there that we can enlarge on. Let's not try to reinvent the wheel. Let's use something that's already in place that is working that we can bring and we can tone down and we can massage so that it will work within this framework. Power owner respects power. If you don't have any, don't nobody respect you. And what we're trying to do right now is gain power so that we're going to be able to sit at the table with the municipalities and the universities in order to have a conversation. But until that leadership is, is established, and the big question that we're posing right now is, is who is the leadership within this community? Who represents that, that leadership? And so I've passed around a document called the Community Benefit Agreement, which is basically establishing a memorandum of understanding that will exist between the project and the community in terms of how a project is carried out, who's going to be hired, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Those things we have not yet done, so there are some first step things that we have to do. So I implore you to take this document home and, and study it, and next time when we come back, we can start having a discussion about building the necessary infrastructure that will represent the leadership that will be able to go to the table with the university and the city and say, this is what we as a community want. Because anytime it involves public funds, we have a right to be at the table to delineate, to adjure them, this is how we want the money to be spent, and this is what we want. Mm -hmm. We have not yet done that. Mm -hmm. okay. Because we have not yet established the necessary power base. Mm -hmm. I was watching a movie a couple of days ago, and some cave divers had went into a cave and they got trapped. These are professional cave divers. And one guy who evidently wasn't uh, the sharpest pencil in the bunch, he says, well, we'll sit and we'll wait until the rescue team come. And the leader said, uh, we're that team. We're the ones. There's nobody coming to save us but us. Mm -hmm. We're it. We're the professionals on the ground. Mm -hmm. We're talking about grassroots fundraising, we're talking about grassroots organizing, and this is what it's going to take. The intelligentsia of the mindset of the people who are here and others, we've got to make it happen. Nobody else is going to make it happen. Nobody is coming to save us. Mm -hmm. I just, I got to leave. But I'm sorry I have to leave, but that my, my seniors are my, my response. I just take them very seriously. Because um, I'm a senior. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to say that um, I agree with uh, a lot of things that Imani said and also Reverend Barnes. And I, I, you know, as I look at how we are meeting the needs in marketing, the first thing you do in marketing is you find out what the needs are. You know, you find out what um, what's out there. In fact, you're going to start a business. What do you do? You you find out what the needs are. If that's going to be what they need and so forth. I don't think a lot of that stuff was done in the beginning. And I think that sometimes you have to go back to go forward. And what I mean by that, I don't mean I want to take you backwards. I've said all along, I only say the dirty word. <laughs> We're in technology, yes. But sometimes you have to meet people with their needs. Mm -hmm. If they don't have technology in their home, they don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. you got to find out what they need. you got to meet them there. It's with anything else in church. When you've got people that you bring into church, you have to find out what their needs are to help them grow in church and in spirituality. It's the same thing. I don't think we did that well. And I think that's why we didn't get what we wanted to get, okay? So I think the only comment I have is, like when we started the class, there is another class we're getting ready to start. This is targeting not just seniors, this is targeting other people. We had a hard time getting people even to join this class. But we're working with women in transition, they're gonna bring those women over. So we're reaching out to the needs of the people in the community to bring them what they need. So, Thank you. See you later. And if, if anything you need me to do, just let me know. But I have to go. Okay. To specifically respond to Imani, um, I think that if we use two phrases, one is the people united will never be defeated. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, how are the people going to be united? And the second point is a representative democracy. 
And uh, by that, I'm not talking about the structure of the city council, which is a form of that. But now what we're talking about is the anchor social institutions. And just to remind people that might not know this, of all of the projects in the United States, all the projects, we're the only project that included among our anchor social institutions all the homeless shelters, all the social service agencies, all the senior homes, all the women's shelters, all of that. So we're the only community that said the legislation about the vulnerable populations we're taking absolutely seriously. So if you look at point number eight, this is a proposed organizational structure. The resolution calls for an annual assembly of the anchor social institutions. We would add to that any forms of organization. Uh, here it says at least five members. And that's simply an approximation to say rather than limiting it to the formal organizations, we want to make this available to everybody. So if you've got any kind of group, you could be a part of this. Really, the model for this is the broad united front, for example, that led to the independence of South Africa, where they had soccer clubs, PTAs, all of those kind of organizations were represented in the front. So in order to deal with this digital divide, we want to try to get everybody at the table. So at least once a meeting, once a year, we have a people's assembly to deal with the question of how much progress is being made to deal with the digital divide in our town. Now, with regard to the university, there is a committee at the university, a campus-wide committee, trying to deal with this question of the way in which the university is using digital technology. And one of the issues is what is the relationship between the university and the community. And so in their meeting this past week, for example, a couple of issues were discussed that come out of our discussion that people there are very interested in. For example, we have at the university something called a public engagement uh, program. And as I think some of you remember, we published a document that brought all those programs together because nobody knew what all the programs were that were in the community from the university. Now we've migrated to the notion of a local wiki, which is a website that can freely upload information from the community so we can offer everyone in the community a free website on that, in that site. This committee is very interested in that because there are a lot of stuff in the university that they'd like to share with the community. And there's no way to do that right now. So inside the university, there's a committee that's moving in our direction. Just as we have to organize ourselves not in asking them what they're going to do, but what we're going to do to bring to the table, and then on that basis challenge people to step up and bring something to the table, because we're bringing something to the table. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, and the other thing is this. No matter who it is that gets the contract to roll it out to the rest of the city, <laughs> there has to be an organization in the community to hold that process uh, to be accountable. In other words, individual whining about what's going to happen is not going to work. We have to organize and be and have representation at the meetings to speak up and to write letters to the process, to have paper flowing in the system. I mean, maybe someone else has a better plan, but to me, having been on the policy committee from the very beginning, who shows up and who talks and who makes the impression, not just in words, because we've had people come individually, I represent the community, blah, blah, blah. They're ignored. But when people come and they say, we have a letter signed by 14 ministers that wants the community benefit fund, and we got the community benefit fund. So we can go one way or the other. We can go to be on TV and make no impact 
or we can organize and make an impact. So we have a choice. And here is a draft plan, but we need to have more buy-in. And so I'd like to set up, I don't know how much more time we have here, but I'd like to set up some committees or some kind of process for everybody to do some work between now and the next meeting so we can have some progress. Yes. Sister Dan. Thank you for, 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 let me just say that I want to send a word of appreciation to Reverend Nash and, uh, and uh, Ms. Nash because uh, we, we, we need to have places like this to meet. We really appreciate your welcoming us here to New Hope. Um, at the risk of um, making a mistake, well, it's not a mistake, but you know, people always say uh, to encourage people to make their comments or ask their questions is that no question is a stupid question. Mm. So. <laughs> I'm going to take a risk. <laughs> but um, not having been keeping up with the meetings and per se, you know, my husband and I would talk and he shared things with me. But um, uh, just coming in here today and hearing what I'm hearing, um, I guess I guess what I kind of want to say is, is that I'm really a little bit, I'm a little bit shocked, I think, uh, because there aren't certain things in place already. I mean, to me, it seems like, as Reverend Barnes was saying, you know, first things need to be first, and if that's if that doesn't happen, then you do have to go back. And I know that firsthand because with my not-for-profit agency, I've had to go back several times. And and so, but I, what I'm saying here is, is that you're talking about committees, uh, and that's definitely needed. But is there an executive staff? Uh, are there key people? Is there are there say seven or uh, five people who kind of you know put put it all together and then bring it to this bigger group and and then form committees and then carry out the? I mean I don't know. Is that that may be a stupid question? <laughs> we, we we have since we've been having meetings like this community meetings whether it's talking about UCDV or community benefit fund or digital divide. There's always some core players, and most of them are in this room right now. We we know who, who we are. And Name what we it do. out loud. Nash, Bart, you, me, Abdul, um, Carol, and Carol. I mean, so the, the, we're, are we're, those people are those, those people driving, and then uh, we're, other people pushing? I mean, we're, we're one people. step before that. Uh, we had a previous meeting where we set up two working groups for the next meeting. Um, everyone who has been at a previous meeting and taken some responsibility uh, doesn't necessarily attend subsequent meetings. And so we're, we're really sort of that trying to get going. Mm. And, and part of that, your question really is very important in terms of the Community Benefit Fund. Because from my vantage point, if you just assume that there's no, there are no bad people involved, let's just make that assumption. The people who are running UC to B, like any business, are going to have needs for more money than they got. And then it comes to the community benefit fund. We're going to be viewed by the staff as a necessary add-on. Mm. And we're going to have to be at the table at every budget hearing, at mm. every moment, to make sure that a pragmatic decision isn't made that limits or pushes aside the community benefit fund. Because there are a lot of wheels squeaking. And so, uh, just like, take right now, for instance. The end of the grant period had $3 million on the table left. The extension until September meant that that $3 million could still be spent, no, no additional money, and the National uh, Office of NTIA agreed on three different ways to use that money. First, 51 additional anchor social institutions, including New Hope. Secondly, all of the people who want subscriptions that will end as of next month. Right. And third, a Wi-Fi option 
for North Champagne. Now, the decision on where the money is going for those three things are going to be discussed in the policy committee. Now, as a voting member of the policy committee, I'm trying to find out what you all want. Right? But you can't get everything. I can't go into a meeting saying we want everything because they just won't listen to me. Now, take the Wi-Fi, for example. My position right now is North Champaign can become the model for maximum access for the rest of the community. And I say that because, as far as <coughs> I can tell in my crystal ball, when this grant is over, North Champaign is not exactly going to be at the top of the priority list. And so anything we get, we need to get it now. And therefore, become a model for everybody else. Because then everybody else can say, you have the pipes underground, you'll have connectivity, and you'll have Wi-Fi. So we want maximum now for what we got. That's going to be a struggle. Why? Because the anchor social institutions the people and the Wi-Fi are all on the table for this measly $3 million. Now, how we resolve that will be a result of what we discuss here and what's discussed at the meeting of the policy committee. So we really need to get our minds into what the actual decisions are going to be because the IT department of Urbana, the IT department of Champaign, the IT people from the university, everybody's going to be at the table. The community, that is, those of us who think of the community in non-terms of the university and the city and blah, blah, we really need to be at these meetings. And we know that everybody can't be at the meetings, and therefore, your point about a committee to make sure that somebody can be at the meeting. Maybe you could be at this one, I'll be at the next one, you know, however that's working. Or our conversations won't have an impact on policy. And that's what we're right, you know, and it's like the NBA game. Those of you who know the NBA, and I'm sorry if you don't in my example, but the game is the last five minutes. You know, that's the game. And by the way, we're entering the last five minutes right now. And that's why this proposal laid out the whole thing, but as a draft. Now, everybody here needs to get down on this draft because they're going to be discussing it it being the, the future of the organization and the community benefit fund. So I take Reverend Barnes's proposal, for example, and uh, if that's what the group wants to do, we need to set the agenda for our next meeting, but we also need to set up some working groups so that our next meeting, we actually have more on the table in front of us that has been deliberated upon by members of the community so we can move this thing forward. Yes, Reverend Carr. I have a question. At the, you said at the end of March. What's happening at the end of March? The uh, time for subscriptions. In fact, it's the 1st of March. Yes. It, yeah, it's the 1st of March. We have two more weeks. Is it two weeks? We're talking or a next week? Friday. A week and a half. Yeah. I'm not next talking Friday. about that. I'm talking about related to the proposal. I thought you said something about the proposal. Yes, yeah, so what's happening is, as far as I understand it, right, that not this meeting, this coming meeting, <coughs> but the following meeting, <coughs> meetings really, mm -hmm. we're going to be discussing the actual proposal for the organizational form that will exist after the federal grant is over. Okay. And well, so... This advisory committee that's mentioned in the resolution, is that what you're talking about? No, I'm talking about UC to B. UC to B itself. UC to B. And what we're doing is trying to organize so that we're in sync with that. And when that happens, we make sure that the previous policies with regard to community benefit fund and all of that is honored by the new organization. And for example, just to be absolutely frank with you, I'm appointed to the policy committee by the university. Right? I may or may not be on the next policy committee. And therefore, you know, the, the, the committee, the community, 
you know, we have two people who supposedly represent the community. And frankly, it's precisely those two people that have had the weakest attendance record. And they don't have a vote. So and they don't have a vote. really is weak, and I said that three or four meetings ago. So we really don't have them. Go ahead. Like D.C. and Guam and the... <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you can say that, but it, it's true they don't have a vote. But it's also true that they have a voice. And you have to ask yourself the question, does a voice mean anything? The function of that is what is said. You know, it might have something to do with what's said as opposed to whether the voice in general doesn't work or not, because I've been to every meeting, and what's said is important. And I can, dis I can describe to you things that we said in the meeting that made a difference. So it's not a zero. We have made a difference, but we need to make more of a difference by having more knowledge, more activity, and a more pointed policy orientation to be able to direct the policy committee in the direction that we wanted to go. And if we don't do that, it ain't going the way we wanted to go. It's as simple as that. We either have to have a position and a direction, or we will watch others decide. Reverend Nash had a point. I'll, I'll wait, because what I want to say, I want to go back. And I should have made this comment earlier when we were talking about uh, the number of uh, people who have signed up. And I think that number was less than 1,000. Mm -hmm. okay. And so the deadline is March 1. Mm -hmm. And the question was asked how that how we're going to increase that number to 2,500 in that short period of time. Mm. Part of the problem, along with not having mass marketing, part of the problem is the lack of understanding the importance of ending the digital divide. Mm. That's been part mm. of the problem. Mm. When you look at these five, mm. these first five questions that you asked, mm. as I looked at those questions, I could put no by some of those questions for some of the members of my congregation. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure other pastors mm -hmm. can do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? Because of the lack of understanding of how important ending. And before you get to ending that, they need to understand what is digital divide. Mm -hmm. And why is it important to you? Mm -hmm. And that's why Brian class is three quarter empty. It because they don't understand how important it is to go to this class, get this education, get the computer, and be part of the train that's marching towards ending this. The second problem is most of the people who were surveyed initially to, to get this $20 million to start this project have cable. Not internet, cable. Cable came with it, but they didn't buy internet. Mm -hmm. They bought cable. Now, to get them to switch to just internet is a no, because they don't, they don't want internet. They want cable. They don't understand why they need internet. And so they're saying, we're not going to turn off Comcast mm which is giving me cable, telephone, and internet for $99 a month mm. just to get internet because I won't have cable. So all this has to do with understanding how important it is to be part of ending digital divide. And so that is the, that is the conversation that has not really happened in this community. This is what this is the kind of conversation that I'm I'm having with, with New Hope. Explain it to them, and I use simple analogies when I talk to people. Mm -hmm. Very simple now. Never, never, never think people know more than what you think they know. But if you start at the bottom, you'll get everybody. That's right. The simple analogy that, is, that I use is, is if you go to Walmart to apply for a job, yeah. picking up paper in the parking lot. Yeah. 
you have to fill out an application online. And if you do not have a computer, do not have access to a computer, do not know how to use a computer, you will not get a job at Walmart picking up paper on the parking lot. Mm. This get people's attention. What am I saying to them? I'm saying to them that if you do not learn how to use a computer, get a computer, you are going to be left outside because the world is going computer. And then I share with them, once you have that, a door has been opened for you to the world. And you can go anywhere you want to. This has not happened. And so therefore, we have limited amount of people who are signing up for UC to be because they don't understand how important it is. They don't see the sacrifice that they need to make for this to happen. Yeah, we, we spent in the last two years, there's been a lot of energy, money, and, and efforts spent on the access, the, the, the fiber, the, the internet, broadband, all this stuff, and not about what you're saying, which is more important. Why do we even need it? That was never addressed. And so I, I, I have to say that I'm, I'm one of the culprits. And what, I've, you, I've spent, and what you need to do start today is hide me. <laughs> and send me to every church in Champaign to explain to them, give me seven minutes. <laughs> We're laughing, but this, this really is important. I'm, I'm serious. Having hard, I'm having a hard time just talking to people that I run into. And, and I'm not talking about uneducated people, people that have no, 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 college. No, no, just... I'm talking to people that have, um, who have graduated, have the, have the BA and, and their master's. I can't understand. I said, this is a co-op. You know what a co-op is. I, I can't explain what, what you're saying, but I see I understand a little bit more now. Now I understand that it's even more important. This is something like having a little piece that actually belongs to the customer. And, and, and people my age know this. This actually belongs to the people themselves. Comcast not offering you that. Yeah, it's it's the, the the education part was was missed, and uh, again, but the universities their 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 primary goal, the, the 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 money was for below ground. We didn't get money for above ground. The community was responsible for above ground. So at the at the end of the day, everyone in this room we were responsible for educating people the importance of learning how to use a computer. And I understand how I understand both sides. I understand how important. I understand what my role is. But I am looking beyond where we are. Yeah. See, 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 see I, I, I miss a lot of opportunities when I was a young man, simply because I didn't have people who was concerned enough about my future to stick their neck out. I didn't have those opportunities. And I don't want to see that same thing happen to my sons and my grandsons and my members' <laughs> sons and grandsons, the peoples in this North End. We, Pastor Smith, I mean, Pastor uh, Lewis and I, we went out and we knocked on doors because we did not want to see another million dollars come into this community and we not have an opportunity for some of it. And that's why we have the Community Benefit Fund, not because the University of Illinois wanted us to have, not because the city of Champaign or the city of Urbana. Nobody thought about that. We thought about that. We dreamed of that. We spent all our time making it happen, but we, they didn't hire us. And so, we, and so what we need, to, we need to do if we're going to increase this number from less than 1,000 to 2,500, and we probably won't do it by March 1st. Mm. But we can get it done. And we must explain to people that in order for the, the community benefit fund to increase, that number has to increase. Mm. Stop talking about UC to be $20 million because that does not matter. What will help the community is the community benefit fund. And that fund increases as people signs up for you see to be. And you're only talking two to five percent, which probably would be more like three percent. But but look at the math. Three percent of twenty is what? You're not talking about a lot of money. So we have to increase that. But then that should not be the, the dividing factor. What we must think about is 
what does this mean for our community for the future? Okay, Imani and then Nate, and then I want to try to direct us really to where we go from here. Let's talk about the specifics. Um, I have asked at least six times, and hopefully right now will be my last request, and I'll get it. I keep, and I've asked different people, give me the list of folks who haven't yet subscribed. Because there's a list. There's, there's anchor institutions that were identified who still haven't subscribed, for instance. Churches who were included who didn't subscribe. I keep saying if you would just give me the list, we could do strategic targeted interventions and get them. And we're in the 11th hour. I just can't figure out. I've asked uh, Chris Ham, for instance. I've said it in front of Mike. I asked, what's it, Laisha, is that her name? I, and mm. nobody says, oh, that's secret, you can't have it. Mm. I just can't get the follow-up to get it. And so Can I'm out blindly. Can you ask Sophia? Isn't she on the staff as well? Sophia is on the staff as well, who told me Laisha was supposed to get it to me. And Laisha is the one that does have it because she was part I don't of that know committee. why I can't get it. It's, it's like, it's not an invasion of privacy or something, right? Well, they Chris, Chris should have it. We, the, the, what you're talking about is speak the staff. <laughs> what you just mentioned are people who I don't are, have well, Volo is, we're doing the installs. Yeah. So the thing that you gave out last time, this is fabulous because this is an updated list of the, and I just wanted to put marks by the ones we still needed to hit. Okay, like I said, there is a staff. Yes. A paid staff. Yes. Of UCDB. Uh, Mike Smeltzer isn't paid by UCDB. Right. But he is on leave, or he's assigned yeah. to do this by the university. Uh, Laisha is hired. Uh, there's another sister who's with the Center for Digital Inclusion who's uh, a part of this. Uh, Chris Ham and Sophia Noble. Those are the people who are being paid to do this. And so, uh, and the staff is different than the policy committee. Right. In other words, the details of what happens on a daily basis, we don't, we're not privy to that. We're privy to decisions of policy. So again, I think these are questions that have to be raised during the policy committee. Because when something is raised at the policy committee, it becomes an official statement. It's not a casual statement. And uh, for example, let me just give you an example of something that I'm going to call into question. When we granted money for the marketing aspect of this, we also had in it uh, the notion that research and data would be generated. Uh, as of now, we haven't yet seen that research data in enabling us to understand. And that's a question that has to be raised at the policy committee. Now, I'm sure there are answers to all these questions, but we won't get the answers until the questions are raised. Uh, so, Imani, I think to me, Go back to the staff. what you have to do, or somebody has to do, is to raise this question. Um, because while I'm saying it, I'm thinking about dates. Right. <laughs> so to raise that at the next policy committee meeting. That's going to be too late. Then there are two days you know, left. So. I will, when I go home today, I will get on my computer and I will ask again. Send the email to all those people, all of them, and copy me. And then I, in turn, can raise that you know, in terms of the policy committee. Yeah, and I ain't trying to get nobody in trouble. I'm just trying to get people signed up. <laughs> no, 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 the point is this. The point is this. See, here's, here's the point. The brother and sister thing applies. But getting paid sure, to sure. serve the community requires accountability. Correct. So this isn't about outing somebody. This is about are they prepared to out themselves or not? Because they, they took the money. Because they should have been doing that. Well, they, they took the money. Nate. And that's the this, problem. This goes back to Imani's point on 
the power differential. It has not changed. The people who were hired are not from the North End. Mm -hmm. And I don't have anything against any of those people. Exactly. But people who identify with this community have been systematically left out by on purpose because the kinds of things that Pastor Nash and Pastor Lewis were pushing for mm -hmm. was not on the agenda. Now that it is on the agenda, what I was going to suggest is rather than spending a lot of time trying to get a community buy-in, we know you already know who the people are who are energized by this process and who have information. I'm perfectly comfortable letting those people speak on my behalf mm -hmm. because they're the experts. Okay. But to to, to try to do something between within the next week and a half, I I think um, We'll, we'll be able to produce some fruit, but like the pastor's saying, what's next? Because our, our teenagers don't even use computers in, in the sense that the people around this table think of them. Mm -hmm. They use their phones. And so we are not even talking about where, where folks are actually living right now. We're, we're talking about people my age <coughs> realizing, oh, there's a computer world out here. But the young people aren't even there. So, so those kinds of conversations, I think, are really important to, to have. Um, the young man that, that left, this ta table should be full of people like him. <laughs> okay, All we can do is try to help facilitate what this next generation is going to do with this information. See, that's why we're talking about Wi-Fi, because Wi-Fi is going to lessen the phone bills. So the texting that people are doing is going to be available through that Wi-Fi, and that will reduce cost. So what we're talking about is something that will be powerful in terms of impacting budgets. If we have Wi-Fi, then all the younger people are going to buy in immediately because the cell phone is what's going to be cheaper. So we have to look at a lot of levels here in terms of who we're targeting and actually what money from the Community Benefit Fund, if it's invested right, what's the maximum number of people that can be impacted? That's one of the reasons why I don't want to give up the Wi-Fi option because it will then in, in, enable everybody in the area to benefit literally everybody. And what we'll be talking about is something like a 5 or $10 a month cost to save 40 or $50 a month. And that's, that's, a, that's a major thing. I mean, you start talking about as, a, as a, a way of facilitating people using whatever ICT they're using. And yep. texting and cell phone yep. is my, a major thing. My, my only, I, yeah, I, I said that, so my, I guess my major point that I'm trying to make is don't try to wait for this mythical community to come together and make a decision. The people who know how to make these decisions are already involved. We should just be better at marketing. And, 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 and again, I'll, I'll underline what Pastor Nash says. Hire him <laughs> what, what, or, or somebody who actually lives here and is going to be here for the rest of their life. Because that's the only way that the voice of the community is going to get heard. Overwhelmingly, it is outside of our culture to operate um, collectively. Everything in Champaign gets done by, in, by small groups of individuals pushing their own agendas. So what we try to do is find somebody whose agenda is in the interest of the people and, and then work with them. Yes, it's, uh, I think Nate articulated that well, and, and I appreciate the nuts and bolts aspects that are uh, so eloquently being stated here in these last few minutes, because it seems, uh, and as you, as you well know, you know, in organizing and all, 
I took this class many, many years ago. <laughs> um, uh, it is the nuts and bolts, eventually, that you do have to come back to, as you were talking about, your organization having to come back to, oh, let's go back to one. Or as Nate, as a musician, where's one? Let's bring everybody together here. So uh, just two quick things. One is uh, working at the Champaign-Urbana Tenant Union. It doesn't matter, white. Black, Latino, whatever. Economics are always a part of it across the board. Do you have a computer? No, I don't. Are you on email? You can reach me. I work here only two days a week at this particular job, but you can reach me in between. Don't have it. Maybe they'll have access. Doesn't matter. It's across the spectrum. It's somewhat young, and it's definitely older. As Nate is pointing out, the, the generational divide. We talk about the digital divide. I mean, these kids are already on it with all kinds of things that are just, you know, there's a few people around who are keeping up, but I mean, they're just, they're skying. I mean, they're down the road with the way they do what they do. Um, but they're at least learning some things in school now because there's some access to that. And the churches, many times, are over at uh, uh, the church where Mo Betta is. Uh, you know, they do have classes for facilitating, or I'm sure pastors, reverends, ministers in here do this at their churches to try to bring people in to orient them to that. There's, so many aspects here to what it is, and then what I like what you said though about okay, look, but let's just first like if we can lay this network, 